please? for the Alberta party. Um, like I said, without you, what we do just wouldn't be possible. So thank you once again. Um, and I would now like to introduce the man of the hour who's, um, I got to spend the whole day at the Alberta legislature today for, for the most part. Um, and I got to meet his staff and see his office. And let me tell you, uh, first of all, he does not have better office staff. Um, for what some would say is a, a, a rookie MLA, he has one of the most experienced staff, I think, that we could ever ask for. Uh, so he's very lucky in that way. Um, so please know that our leader has a great team behind him, not just from you, but in the legislature. Um, he sat today, he sat very well. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, and thank, and a big round of applause for yourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, and Megan, thank you. I am a world-class sitter. I can sit. Uh, so, uh, those of you, uh, uh, I guess, you know, first off, I want to start by thanking you, Crestwood Curling Club, for hosting this event. Uh, what I, so, thank you. Big round of applause for that. What I really love about this place is when you, when you pull up to park, they've got some reserve parking in the front. The bartender gets the best parking. <laughs> not the manager, not the curly head pro, no, no, the bartender. So, that, my friends, is my kind of place. So, so I, you know, this is, Megan's right, this is all about you. Uh, and this, I, I, I'm, one of the things I'm most excited about, having been elected to the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, is the opportunity to spend a lot more time in and around Edmonton. Yeah. Woohoo! That's, right. that's yeah. really Yeah! That's gonna give us a chance to continue to build the party. I am here tonight to say a huge thank you. A huge thank you to each of you and the countless hundreds of other people who helped our campaigns in and around Edmonton and all around the province. We had a choice to make in this campaign. We could spread our resources evenly. We could try to get as many MLAs elected as possible or we can concentrate our resources in the places we thought we may be able to win an election. What that really worked out to, given the way the NDP was trending here in Edmonton, was most of the effort went into Calgary Elbow to get me elected. And I just want to tell you how much it means to me, for each and every one of you who ran as candidates, for each and every one of you who stood up as volunteers, committed your time, your talent, your money, to make that happen and support our local candidates because we've taken a huge step but it's only one step and from here i need 43 more friends in the legislative assembly yeah. and yeah. many of you are going to be some of those folks who, who uh, joined me in the, in the legislative assembly uh, in, in 2019. so we've done a huge amount of work and we're just getting started so we've taken a big step but it is only one step and although May 5th was a significant day, it is only one day. What I thought I might do is take you through a day, a day in the life, although there is really no two days the same, but I wanted to just bring you up to speed on what I've been doing and what this has really looked like uh, to me and what the experience has been like. So shortly after uh, getting elected on May 6th, on uh, Wednesday, May 6th, I got a call from Dr. David McNeil, the clerk of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, welcoming me to the uh, Legislative Assembly and inviting me up on Tuesday the 12th of May for the initial orientation, for the Rookies MLA orientation. 71 of us MLAs dutifully trooped over to the <laughs> Legislative Assembly. <laughs> 70, I'll say 70, 71 of 87 are new. That's a lot of new MLAs. Although interestingly, as a percentage, it's not the highest in Alberta history. 1935, when the United Farmers switched over to the SoCreds, was in fact a higher percentage of new MLAs. Be that as it may, 
there's a lot of folks who are new to this. Uh, so we all showed up, and, and Speaker Zwaznewski uh, was very gracious in, in uh, get, taking us through what it means to be a member of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta. We were introduced to all of the different uh, uh, officers of the legislature, the Ethics Commissioner, the Auditor General, those sorts of things. We were shown where the bathroom is, that's important. <laughs> um, little known fact, uh, Alan Warwick is here, you probably know this. The men's washroom in the members' side of the Legislative Assembly has this beautiful shoe shine uh, set up there. There's a whole box of which I just discovered today. That was one of those uh, one of the, one of those ama sort of interesting, amazing discoveries you make and you, as you find your way through. Unfortunately, no person there to shine your shoes. You have to do yourself. I uh, hope that would be the uh, the least you can expect. Uh, but we were taught about uh, the very basics of uh, parliamentary procedure. Went back on the Friday of that week, on the 15th, to get the detailed uh, administrative orientation. Here's your office. Here's your computer. Sign. 800 forms, and here's how you get reimbursed for your expenses. And it seemed a little odd to me. And they just they said, all you need to do is you either get a lease in an apartment or you buy a place and you show us that you have title to this place. And you submit these expenses and we'll give you $1,930 a month. I said, but, but what if I really didn't register because I didn't know what an apartment cost around the legislature. So I did a little bit of hunting and cutting a long story short. I found a place for a little more than a thousand dollars, thousand fifty plus utilities. It'll be I don't know twelve or thirteen hundred. So the way it is meant to work is that I submit that every month and I just get a check for nineteen thirty and got automatically deposit. This just isn't right. This doesn't make any sense. So I asked around. I mean, is that the way it's done? Am I? Is this the way it's? Done? Well, yeah. That's just what happens. So I'm thinking. Uh, that, uh, we were talking over here about how I manage my time and how I manage my energy. And I said, you know, I, I found in the campaign. There was really nothing more useful I could do at about 10.30 at night that was going to advance the cause of me winning the election than just go to bed. Yeah. Just go to bed and there's nothing more you can do and there's no point in being up at 2 in the morning worrying about there's nothing you can do. So all about one day in the campaign, I, I was able to sleep you know, like a baby every night. I had a sleepless night after I started to think through the implications of taking all of that money. And I thought, you know, someone's going to stick a microphone in my face two years from now, and they're going to say, so, Mr. Clark, what did you do with the extra $880 a month you got? How much is that? That's a little more than $10,000 a year. So what have you done with that money? Did you count it on your tax? Did you? What did you do with it? And it just felt wrong. So, as you probably saw, I raised that issue. And that's one of the things that we get to do as MLAs, and it's the opportunity that we have as a fresh set of eyes on an old institution and say, well, why do we do it that way? Oh, well, that's just the way we do things around here. It's the wrong answer. It's the wrong answer. So we have an opportunity. That's one example of, a, of an issue, I think, that, that, that we can hopefully repeat itself as we have a new group of MLAs in the legislature. So as you probably know, today we installed a new, uh, we, we elected a speaker from, from amongst their peers and MLAs. And I had sincerely hoped that this was going to be the first tangible example of a new day in Alberta politics where cross-partisan cooperation may win the day over the governing majority just imposing their will. Because let's face it, 71 brand new MLAs, the role of Speaker of the Assembly is a very important role. And it's not just a referee. There's 800 years of parliamentary history that we need to be aware of, and all sorts of subtle, obscure rules that, that, that dictate how uh, business is conducted in the Legislative Assembly, which are all very important. So I thought, you know, there's an opportunity here to elect someone, one of those 16 MLAs, it didn't really matter to me who it was, who had some experience at least as deputy speaker. That didn't happen. So the NDP, when they published the seating chart today, had 51 of their MLAs on the government side, and had three MLAs in this little row on the other side. I thought, well, that's pretty clear. One of them was Robert Warner from Medicine Hat, who was, we all knew was probably going to be speaker. And the other two, Debbie Jabor from Peace River uh, and Richard Fian from here in Edmonton, were the three over there. I thought, well, that's pretty obvious. We don't obviously know how this is going to go. And that's exactly how it played out. Uh, on the other side, our friends in Wild Rose, I thought, had an opportunity to maybe change the tone, to not play gotcha politics. Instead, they decided to play games. So they, the way it works when you elect a speaker is the Clerk of the Assembly, because at this time, remember, we don't have a speaker. So the Clerk of the Assembly stands up and says, does anyone have any nominations for a speaker? So someone stands up from the MD side and says, I'd like to nominate Mr. Robert Warner from Medicine Hat. Here's 10 reasons why he's wonderful. Fine. Mr. Warner, do you accept the nomination? 
I, with humility, accept the nomination. Fine. Any other nominations? Wild Rose stands up and they nominate Sandra Jansen from the PCs. And they hadn't asked Sandra. So she said, uh, well, uh, with respect, uh, no, thank you. I'm going to decline the nomination. The PCs stand up and they nominate uh, Dave Rodney from Calgary Lahey uh, as their candidate. Uh, and then Wild Rose stands up again and says, um, we think it's really important, uh, given that we have uh, a queen and we have uh, the Chief Justice of the uh, uh, of Canada is, uh, is female and so is our Chief Justice here in Alberta. Tomorrow we're going to install a Lieutenant Governor as a woman. We have a female Premier. We have an opportunity here to have Alberta's first female speaker. We think that's a great idea. So we pick Stephanie McLean from Calgary Varsity. Would you like to be speaker, Stephanie? And she stands up and says, no, I decline. And they did it one more time. And it was it was gamesmanship, and it was gotcha politics, and it was old, it was just all the things that we really hoped that in a new legislature, in a new day in Alberta politics, with the first new government in 44 years, maybe, maybe we can be beyond it. So I came away from today disappointed and concerned that the NDs are going to start to realize that as a majority government, they can do what the heck, whatever the heck they want. And on our side of the house, um, how was it, uh, I think one of the PCs said, uh, we're going to get used to being absolutely certain that we're right and losing every time. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, welcome to opposition. And as Megan said, uh, I, I, uh, as, 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 as someone who can sit incredibly well, um, I'm, off, I'm off on all the way, the furthest, if you've been to the legislature, I'm off on the, uh, by the sergeant at arms on the, on the front row, off at the furthest side away from the uh, speaker, uh, in the, on the opposition side, of course, uh, for now, for the next four years, but after four years, I'll be on the government <laughs> side. <laughs> and many, many of you will be with me, I, I hasten to add. Uh, and, and so, you know, what that means is it's, uh, it's a bit of a lonely existence, even, even today when every, every MLA is, is in the house. And, and, you know, what it means is I can't really hide. As an NDP, especially backbencher, it's pretty easy to hide. You don't need to be there every day. You don't need to be there for the whole sitting. You certainly don't need to speak to every issue. And you can kind of slump in your chair. And just, you know. So I need to always be on top of things. And the other thing I found is in the assembly, I can't really hear all the funny little remarks that happen sort of off off to the side here. So you know, you occasionally hear sort of some mumbling and then a few people laughing and you sort of feel like you're the odd, odd kid. Out. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll get over that. So, um, but you know, there is an enormous opportunity that's presented to us here in the Alberta party. The center is wide open in Alberta politics, absolutely wide open. So the opportunity that presents to us here is still undefined. And I think we need to do work to define what that opportunity really is for us. And we also need to be patient and let that opportunity present itself. Because we do need to give the New Democrats a chance to govern. We do need to hear what the throne speech says on Monday. We do need to hear and understand how Rachel Notley will actually govern. I think very highly of Rachel Notley. I respect her a lot. She's very uh, bright and to her great credit uh, has agreed to brief opposition members on bills and important bills. So I'm going to receive a briefing tomorrow afternoon on Bill 1. That's something that hasn't traditionally been done, at least in recent history by the PCs. That's a very positive thing. She's also reached out and she and I are going to sit down tomorrow. That's a very positive thing. She's sitting down with, with opposition leaders. So I, I, I appreciate that very much. So I do hope that we have an opportunity to forge a new path here in Alberta. And it depends on what they do. Where they do things that I agree with, I will support them enthusiastically. I'm excited, I'm optimistic about their climate change strategy. It's something we've needed in this province for a very long time. And I really look forward, I said to Shannon Phillips today, the Minister of Environment and Parks, I told her exactly that. I said, I really look forward to seeing what we come up with because I think there's a real opportunity to do some, some important work uh, that will really go a great length to repairing Alberta's global reputation, supporting our core industries, and hopefully impacting climate change, having a real impact on that. So there is some opportunity there. I look forward to working with them on those things. There will be things, I'm sure, we don't agree with. And where we disagree, we'll disagree respectfully, forcefully, say why it is we disagree, but what we would do differently. Now, those of you who are familiar with the news media will know that what you're probably going to see on television, hear on the radio, read in the newspaper, see online, you're going to see Greg Clark disagrees with this. 
they won't probably, in many cases, print the second sentence. And I would do, you know, I disagree with X, I would do Y. The good news is we have, you know, through Megan and through, uh, through, through many of you who've done a lot of work with us on the social media side, the great news about 2015, living in the time that we do, is we have that direct channel of communication uh, that we can communicate exactly what we would do. So that's the intent, is that we're going to communicate through both the caucus website as well as the continuing to communicate through the Alberta Party website and other uh, means, exactly what it is that we would do differently. Uh, and so Megan said we've got some great staff. Is, are, are, uh, is Barb or Natasha, are they here tonight? They were going to come, but maybe they're, maybe they're not. Uh, maybe they're helping uh, write a bill briefing or something. But, yeah, so I, I have, uh, I have st uh, two staff here, and, and uh, as, as Megan said, we have hired two people who have worked in the Alberta legislature who really understand how things work. And so they can explain to me, Greg, you're going to get 10 minutes to speak on this, and here's the briefing, and be sure you don't say something that somebody else said. And if somebody says something like this about you, then call a point of order, and, you know, those sorts of things. That's going to be, that's incredibly useful and helpful to me. And I do have an advantage over many of my new rookie MLA colleagues in that I have been a full-time political leader for almost two years. And I know the press gallery, and I have a sense of how to operate. And so that's why the issues that we've raised around expenses, around shredding, we've been able to gain a fair bit of traction because I know those are the kinds of issues, absent substantive policy announcements from the government, that I know that will be interesting to the people of Alberta and interesting to the news media, and that gives us an opportunity for, for some airtime. So that leaves us in a, in, a, in a good spot, but in a spot that to take advantage of this opportunity, we need to work incredibly hard. We need to work hard together, and we need to work hard to define that opportunity, and once we have that opportunity, to really take advantage of it. What we can always be doing is building constituency associations, identifying people who may be great candidates, people who will be those glue volunteers. All of you in this room know exactly what that means. But you know what it means to be involved in your communities and to make things happen. Continue to do that, to reach out to people and create a home for the politically homeless. The PC party, I think, is probably finished. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the PC party but I think they're probably finished. And that leaves a lot of people looking for answers, saying, well, now what? They probably don't feel they fit with the NDP. Many certainly don't feel they fit with Wild Rose. So now what are you gonna do? We need to give those people a compelling reason to come and join the Alberta Party. So, we've done a lot of work. We've done a huge amount of work to get to the point where we've elected an MLA. And I appreciate sincerely from the bottom of my heart all of the work that's gone into making that happen. What we've done is we've earned the right to do an awful lot of work. <laughs> now we get started. So in many ways, it's the end of the beginning for the Alberta Party. From here we build, from here we build, and we build constituency associations, we reach out into those communities, we identify great candidates, many of whom are in this room tonight. We run in every single one of 87 constituencies next time. We give Albertans a real opportunity and a clear choice to elect a moderate, progressive, forward-thinking, fiscally responsible government that will take us in to the uh, from 2019 and beyond. So thank you again to each and every one of you, to all the people who worked on your campaigns, to all of those others who couldn't be here tonight. It means an enormous amount to me, and if I haven't had a chance to speak with you in person, I really want to do that before I head out. Thank you again, and I will be in town a lot more, so I look forward to spending a lot more time with each of you. Thank you so much. Lots of food left. Please partake uh, 